Before we begin, the t-shirt is purely coincidental. It has nothing to do with the fact that I recently told Jeff that I absolutely love the Puma. Honest. Progress on the 205 has been fairly good recently, but it was slowed down a bit by a fairly major issue. I know the Peugeot 205 is prone to rot. It's 28 years old, it's French, and this particular one has been around the block a few times. What I wasn't quite prepared for was how much rust it had. I was fairly certain it was limited to that little bit of scabbing on the near side rear wheel arch. What I wasn't prepared for was for a large chunk of the car to come off. In the Peugeot, the jack is actually held on by a captive threaded section on the driver's side inner wing. I unscrewed it to get it out of the way to do some more underbonnet work and it wouldn't really come out, it was quite tight in there. So I gave it a bit harder of a yank and when I did, a bit of the inner wing came out and it emerged that the bit that the jack actually screws into was completely rotten. A bit more stabbing with a screwdriver revealed that there was quite a lot more rust there than I would have liked and the more I prodded, the larger of a hole opened up. Now on a fairly major structural area, like the driver's side inner wing for example, we do need some solid strong metal to make sure this car is safe and usable for our upcoming road trip. Now as much as I'd love to show you how to do it myself, cut it out, weld it, rust protect it and make it solid again, I don't really know how to weld and we do need this car not burnt to the ground in order to keep using it. So I had to kind of break with the whole DIY do it yourself vibe and find it out to someone who actually knows how to do it. It's not pretty on top and it's not much better underneath, but we've got a plan. A flapper wheel takes off paint and any old underseal to work our way back to good metal. Next the rusty section is cut out as square as possible. When you see how much of it was rusty, it's not exactly comforting. A new flange is needed first, so it gets mocked up with cardboard before being cut from aluminium sheet and then welded on. This is what causes you rust and the inner arch. Massive, massive load of mud in there. Rotted it all out from within. Lovely. The hole itself then gets transferred to another cardboard template, then to aluminium sheet before being welded in all the way round. With the plating done, the welds are protected with seam sealer before the top is given a coat of yellow paint, the bottom under sealed, and the Peugeot's rust repair is done. Yeah, I know, farming the job out to someone else isn't really in keeping with our DIY theme, but it must be said that rust repair was done really nicely, and now it's painted and rust protected, it should stay solid for the future, and because I didn't do it, the car is still here. Next up was another interior improvement because you may remember last time I fitted the aerial base to the Peugeot but I didn't even have an aerial to go into it, let alone a head unit to actually test it. Well pretty much the day after I filmed the last video the aerial did actually turn up and because it was a universal one with a few different fitments it just screwed straight in, looks awesome, jobs are good. You can buy any number of brand new Bluetooth head units online for about 10 or 15 quid but somehow buying a brand new shiny Bluetooth unit doesn't really fit the vibe of the Peugeot with its kind of shabby chic back to basics interior. Instead, I deliberately opted to buy a second hand old unit that looked more in keeping with this interior. And like Jeff, I then had to buy an adapter loom to convert the Peugeot's wiring to the universal standard ISO plug. And it'll do me just fine to hopefully drown out a little bit of that XUD clatter. Right, that's enough sitting around and talking, let's actually do something. One of the problems the Peugeot's had that continues to be an irritant in regular use is the passenger side door lock tab. It's been broken ever since we owned the car and that means you can't actually lock and unlock the passenger's door from inside the car. And that means because this car doesn't have central locking, every single time you want to open it, you've got to run around, use the key and unlock it. But today it's time to actually get that sorted to make this door usable without having to put the key in it from the outside. I know, luxury, right? 
A generous helping of plastic glue sticks the lock firmly back in place, and while it's drying, it's time for another interior cosmetic fix. This gaffer tape residue on the dash, and my theory as to why this is here is because this is a junior, i.e. the bottom of the range, a really, really basic spec, it doesn't actually come with a glove box lid. So I reckon someone has actually tried to gaffer tape one in place or something in place, just so you've actually got something to cover your glove box area. But now we're left with this horrible residue all over the dash that has been baked on by sun and the passage of time. So I'm going to be taking it off and I'm bringing out the big guns thinners kept in this rather lovely water bottle. Now thinners are genuinely really really strong stuff, you shouldn't get it on your skin if you can avoid it. If you've seen that scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark where the bloke's face melts off, I mean it isn't quite that bad, but still. I'm just going to be rubbing it all over this gaffer tape residue in the hope that I can get this all cleaned off and this will be a thing of the past. And there we have it. After just 10 minutes with the thinners and a little bit of elbow grease, the dash is now completely clear of that horrible gaffer tape residue that's been on there for God knows how many years. Next up, let's go around the back of the car and fix a fairly major practicality issue. The lack of a parcel shelf, because the fact of the matter is, because this is a hatchback with a large glass rear window, you kind of need a parcel shelf so people can't see what you're storing in the boot. Now because this is a junior, and as we've said, it's a very basic spec, I don't know if it even came with one originally, but what I do know is, is that original 205 ones are ruinously expensive. I've had a quick look online, I've spoke to some owners clubs who are breaking them and things like that, and I can't seem to get an original 205 parcel shelf for less than 50 quid. Thankfully, I've got a far cheaper and more creative solution to the problem. This. This is in fact the parcel shelf from a Citroen Berlingo Multispace, keeping it all within the PSA family. However, because cars have grown quite a lot since the 205 was released and the Multispace was released, this is far, far too wide to fit in the boot of the little 205. So my plan is I'm going to measure this space, cut this down to size, readapt the feet further down if I need to, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I should then have a customer adapted parcel shelf from a Citroen Berlingo Multispace to go in a Peugeot 205. This certainly sounds like it could well be a world first. I measure the width of the boot and then use tape to mark where on the parcel shelf it needs cutting. After making some initial cuts into the wooden board with a saw, it's time to don the safety glasses and use an angle grinder to cut through the metal bracing bars. It's worth noting I'm doing this in a wide open space with access to a fire extinguisher, should the worst happen. After a bit more cutting and sawing, the parcel shelf is cut down, and with a little bit of percussive fitment, it's in. I'm actually pretty chuffed with that. It's not the neatest or the most presentable job, and to be clear, an original parcel shelf is the way to go if you can get one for cheap, but to be honest, for something we got completely for free, I don't think you can argue with that. It shuts perfectly, it fits, and you can't see stuff that's in the boot. It's not pretty, but it'll do for now. With all the jobs done, it's time for the Peugeot to get a deep clean. It was well overdue for a wash, and with the little pug finally looking its best, I took it to the seaside for some pretty shots, eager to join the others on our upcoming road trip. Yeah.